got a t-shirt with blood stains all over it, maybe laundry isn't your biggest problem right now. <laughs> I remember the day the candle shop burned down. Everybody just stood around and sang happy birthday. And a security guard came over and said, you're gonna have to move, you're blocking the fire exit. As though if there was a fire, I wasn't gonna run. <laughs> Right you woman. make love to the right woman. Johnny is beautiful, beautiful. I mean, the last time I made love to my wife, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Nothing was happening. I looked her, I saw what's the matter. Can't you think of anyone either? <laughs> yeah. I never learn, you know? Like a waitress will bring my meal. Hey, enjoy your meal, you too! <laughs> but you don't have one, do you? I'm a doofus! If you do eat, enjoy it when you eat it. If you have a break or something later, if you get an opportunity, that's all I'm trying to say. That's all that I'm driving at, really. Hello, welcome to Comedy Think Tanked, a podcast with Leonard Kimball and Nick Gordon, two comedians who know how to take a drink and have a thought. Sit back, get comfortable, and enjoy. Now, whether they're ready or not, here's your hosts, Leonard and Nick. Hello, and welcome to the Comedy Think Tank podcast. I'm one of your hosts. Hosts? I'm one of your hosts, <laughs> Leonard Kimball. Uh, it, welcome also to the podcast, uh, my co-host, uh, what's your name again? Uh, Nick Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a, 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 a dish you, can, you make with like a... Oh, like, like chicken. with curry and chicken and... And ham in the middle. And ham in the middle. That's a chicken cordon. Oh, cordon. I think. Oh, with a C. Oh, cordon bleu. Cordon oh. bleu. Oh, we should start over. That was awful. That was I terrible. don't know French. Uh, that's all right. Neither do I. Those were good, though. Uh, right here in Portland, Maine, they're made. Barber Foods. Barber Foods. Yeah, yeah. I ate those things all the time growing up. Growing up. Yeah. Oh, oh in Chicago? You got those in Chicago? Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I thought that was just a thing that we... I know so they were this... made here in Maine. Oh, yeah. Like, you could... I mean, I'm not from here where we are in Auburn, but, you know, you uh, from where I work and where you work in Portland, it's like a short one mile drive. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right there. Right wow. by Mercy Hospital on Four River. I should get more of those. It'd probably be cheaper if I just go right there and get them. You can get them. You can have them right off the assembly line. Just so that okay. way they don't freeze them first. Like you, you can, you can oh. take them and just eat them right there at the assembly line. Yeah. Are but, those, are, those are when you can, you could microwave them or put them in the, in the oven, right? Allegedly. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I remember coming to the realization that like yes it's not as good when you microwave it but i it's get to eat seven of these really really quickly now good christ man <laughs> <laughs> uh microwaving them i seem to remember much like um much like any food you microwave the outside would be cooked hotter than the pits of hell <laughs> hotter than the surface of the sun uh -huh. on an august day <laughs> I don't know if they have August on the sun, but go ahead. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. It's hot during August, so it's got to be warmer on the sun. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine July on the sun? That's, July on the sun must that's be awful. brutal. No okay. one wants to go to the sun in yeah. July. But Christmas on the sun? Christmas on the sun can be nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's yeah. still warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're still good. You, you should wear a coat. <laughs> yeah, you could wear a jacket. Maybe during the middle of the day, if you're having lunch outside, in like in the actual sun, uh -huh. it would be a little warm. Okay. But... You know, in the evening as the sun goes down, it'll get a yeah. little cooler. You put your little personal fan away because you, you won't need it anymore. You won't need that, yeah. Okay. I heard that um, if a grain of sand were... Oh, how did this go? It was like if the sun... If a grain of sand had the same level of heat as the sun does, like in comparison to us, we'd be dead. Like within 150 miles, it would kill you. Like it was... That's how hot the sun is. Wait, what? It's something ridiculous. I just saw it on the other what? day on Facebook. Like, what does that have to do with a grain of sand? Like, if the grain, of, like, like if a grain of sand was as hot as the sun within 150 miles of us, it would just like annihilate everything in its path. Oh, <laughs> it, it would murder you. It would. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> a grain of sand in your shoe murders you too. Have you ever noticed that? You get like a little piece of sand in your yeah. shoe and you're just like, I can't take it. I can't but, walk around with this thing in my shoe. But if you can tolerate it, then eventually it just it becomes a pearl, right? Yeah, if you're a clam. Are you a clam? Oh, does it just work for everybody? No, I think it just clams. Oh. But if a cl- if it gets in one of a clam, like a clam is wearing his new shoes mm-hmm. and it gets in, like a grain of sand gets in his new shoes, he gets really upset. Really? Yeah. You ever seen a mad clam? <laughs> There's a really inappropriate joke there, but no, I'm going to say no. <laughs> no? Okay. You know who probably seen a mad clam before? <laughs> <laughs> Our guest today. <laughs> King of the Segway. King of Nick the Segway, Gordon. Nick Gordon. Um, uh, we interviewed Peter Liu and David McLaughlin some six months ago, back in November of 2021. Yeah. We lost the- track of the recording, and we found it. <laughs> it was, we found it on my computer. It, <laughs> under the file that said, hey, put it's, this out. <laughs> yeah. It's really well organized. I mean, it's like OneDrive slash comedy slash comedy think tank slash... You know, episodes. Hey, don't give away. Don't give away oh. all the secrets. Secrets. Okay. What if we get hacked? Oh. Uh, by a grain of sand. Incre- <laughs> we had a good interview with these guys. I liked them. I liked them a lot. I didn't realize at the time that we were interviewing two extremely talented up and coming comedians. Yes. I mean, I knew they were good, but I didn't realize like how, like, well, maybe not David. I haven't seen David. <laughs> out in the- <laughs> I, well, I do, rem- <laughs> I do remember saying to David. Like uh, when he he mistakenly said he was doing it for like a year or two years. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I said something like, "What? <laughs> you're, <laughs> so, the fu- you're so much better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it longer than you." Yeah, no, uh, he's so, he's been at it a while, and so yes. is Peter. And you know, they're two really good Boston comedians that are are. I, I personally think they're going to be you know big someday. And and yeah. Peter Peter's been traveling all around since, like all through the winter. I mean, just post after post after post. Him in different comedy clubs all over the place. Yep. And we're lucky enough to have him back uh, and David back coming up very shortly. Um, David's going to be at uh, Island Dog in South Portland on May twenty first. Am I right? That's correct. And then Peter's going to be back here at Craft Brew Underground on May twenty seventh, hosting the Six by Ten show. Also correct. Yeah, and I. I feel fortunate to have those guys because they could easily be getting shows, you know, in Boston, in South, you know, New York, Atlantic City, you know, out there in the world traveling as a comedian. Right. You know, they, they have the, the chops for that. So for any of you listeners that want to take in a good comedy show, find find one with these guys on it. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they associate with uh, reputable bookers and, and they... And they <laughs> like us. Like us. And, and <laughs> they, uh, and they uh, you know, they're all over the place. So, and they're really good. They're really funny. And... You know, I like it. I'm very happy that we get to interact with these people. Yeah, I think it's 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 like it's a lot of fun. Uh, knowing that these people are doing the thing that we're doing, and we just want to talk to them about their process and yeah, how they have fun with it and their aspirations. It's uh, it's really cool. Absolutely is. I, I feel bad that we waited so long to <laughs> to put this uh, interview out, but yeah, um, we. Well, actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's funny, as you mentioned during um, the interview that, um, you know, you about your trip to Chicago, which we just released yeah, as a, a previous episode. So actually, time, you, know, you know, not necessarily in chronological order on purpose, but right. it turns out we 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 kind of did it right by doing it wrong. <laughs> this is just like a, a Law & Order episode yeah. you know, on like NBC or something like that. So like, you know, they record them, they sit forever, and then they re- release them in order. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's true. I just, mm-hmm. it's unfortunate that they're making so much more money than we are. Oh. You yeah. know, I feel bad for them. <laughs> you feel, I feel bad that they have sponsors. What are you going to do with all this money? Advertise, yeah, exactly. You guys yeah. spread the wealth for mm-hmm. crying out loud. Yeah, speaking of which, if you want to sponsor the Comedy Think Tank podcast, uh, just uh, give me a call. What would you, what would you say, I mean, you're really, you've, over the winter, while we haven't been releasing podcasts, you've been... Hitting the pavement, pounding the pavement for for business networking. Oh, what would you say would be like the perfect sponsor for this podcast? Oh, jeez, I have no idea. Well, we, uh, so, so we're we're uh, we're uh, we're drinking. I mean, so, I mean, we're both drinking something right now. We're drinking right now. And yeah, it's comedy. Think tanked, as in like you're getting tanked. And, oh, oh, I get it. So, uh, an auto dealer, an auto. Yeah, that would be good. A deep like a person who details cars, right? 
Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Because that's a lot of those, you know, those nice cars, people have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. What about like a, like a, like a cardboard box salesman? <laughs> Would that be a good sponsor? Are you talking about like, like the, the U-Haul, but just the division that sells boxes? Just the box division. Yeah. Okay. Before they put the U-Haul logo on it. Oh. <laughs> It's like plain brown box. Just a plain brown box. Right. Welcome to plainbrownbox.com. Yeah. Okay. Podcast presented a comedy think tank presented by plain box. Plain brown brown box. Box. Com. Dot com. Oh, that's a website I got to go by now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> or perhaps, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> looking around this room. We're in the green room here at CBU. It's white. It's white. It's actually not even, it's like just. There's nothing green in here. Nothing. Oh, well, no, there's... Oh, a, the floor is green. The floor is green. Oh, man, the floor is green. Look at that. Oh. I wish I wasn't so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I would have seen that walking in. Are we actually tanked? I'm getting there. Okay. I have a I have a guava flavored cider. <laughs> I don't... It, the, Seriously? The other option was a pineapple one, and I can't stand pineapple to save my life. <laughs> so proud of you. Both of them... Um, both of them change the taste of your pee. I mean, the smell of your pee, though. The taste as well. Yeah, I imagine. If it, I think it smells I think, like that. I think taste is mostly smell. Oh. Are you a doctor? No. Oh. But I work for doctors. Oh. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Man, we, we cover all possible um, scenarios here, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. It's really strange. <laughs> we, need a, we need a producer. We need someone to keep us on task. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, These, this is the outline. We got the outline right here, you two idiots. Follow the outline. We discussed this nearly an hour ago. What's wrong with you two? We need someone behind a little a glass window, just screaming at us. Wait, 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 He's just holding up sides. Move on. Yeah. Move on. He's pounding. He's just pounding on the. And we're like, what's wrong with Tim? He looks in distress. <laughs> He's going to give himself a heart attack. It's a good thing Leonard works with doctors. Uh, I don't actually work with doctors, so I'm no, sorry, Tim. But Tim's dead. Oh, Tim. <laughs> I hope no one out there is listening is actually named Tim. And they're like, is it me? Am I supposed to be there? <laughs> Producing this? You know, if we had stopped... Holy- if we had stopped talking like 12 minutes ago, this episode would be out by Friday. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. We, we really screw it up <laughs> again and again and again. But man, we have so much fun. Yes. Have you laughed like that all day yet? Uh, no. See? It, it, even though I was working on comedy all day today. Ah, oh, see, you haven't uh, Yeah, I actually took the day off. That's the perfect. Oh. That's, oops, we're underneath oh, I, the pipes. Oh, I can't hear what it is, so. Somebody flushed above us. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the brown room soon. <laughs> <laughs> brown and yellow. Okay, I think probably we should turn it over to our interview. <laughs> Tim is having another heart Tim attack. Tim is freaking out. He woke up. <laughs> he revived himself, and he's about to have a stroke now. The outline. Oh, I remember now. That means move on. Yeah. When he does uh, this, the, the, the thing with the swirly finger. things with the fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Continue. Move on. Move uh, on. Move okay. On, move on. All right. That's the beauty of uh, of uh, podcasting. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, we can say and do whatever we want, and then we can kick it over to our interview, and then you'll see from that we just did the exact same thing <laughs> for 45 minutes with those guys. <laughs> just saying and doing whatever we want. I love comedy. <laughs> we own the microphones. We can just say whatever we, 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 want. Do what we want. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all free. <laughs> and if you listen, it's on you. <laughs> your fault (laughs) no we have fun you asked for this you did or at least we asked you to ask for this okay potential sponsors email us at comedy think tanked at gmail.com anything anything and everything (laughs) could be a sponsor great as long as you don't mind whatever the hell this is (laughs) all right without without uh (laughs) why you you don't have to say without anything i know you could just say hey and now and now and now we'll throw it over to our interviews with our interview I'm sorry One interview fun. with Peter Liu and David McLaughlin yeah thank you guys uh, 
Hello, welcome to po- uh, the uh, fuck. Hello, welcome to the Comedy Think Tank podcast <laughs> in the basement of Craft Brew Underground. I'm Nick Gordon with Leonard Kimball and our two guests today uh, up from the Boston area, the Peter Boston. Liu and Dave McLaughlin. Boston, what's going on, Boston? Hello, guys. Is that how? Is, is that how you guys all say Boston? There, you all just say Boston. I'm trying to fit in. I think whenever <laughs> someone does the Boston accent, you just give them the icy, chill silence of the Northeast. <laughs> Welcome to Boston. Silence. Well, thank you guys very, very much for, for joining us uh, this, this fine evening. This fine Saturday evening on what a lovely day. Yeah. How was the drive up? Uh, it's pretty uneventful. You guys have a lot of trees. <laughs> Not much else, you know? It is true. I filled up my tank. Right before I came here, just so I wouldn't have to stop. Oh. <laughs> people, oh shit! People love okay. Maine. You love Maine. He's like, of, I'm out of here as soon as the show is done. <laughs> lots of, lots of, <laughs> extra <laughs> second in this place. <laughs> lots of pine trees. Yeah, I just got a house. It's, it's surrounded by pine trees. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, it's Maine. It's the Great North Woods. No, that's Minnesota, I think. Yeah. So it, we could do with a few fewer trees. I that's think. true. Well, they yeah. tried cutting them down uh, to build that power line recently oh, yeah. to, su- to supply power <laughs> to you guys. I don't know if you heard about this. They vetoed uh, the, the, the power line up here, which was being built specifically to power Boston. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Boston. Sorry. Boston. No power it, for you guys. It, yeah. I saw a lot of, I saw some solar panels on my way up. Oh, uh, so, that, that's, so that's the route you're going to have to go because they were, they were going to transmit uh, electricity from Canada down through Maine into Massachusetts. And the, the voters of Maine said, no way. <laughs> That's, wow, why, why is Boston getting his power from Maine? I no, from Canada, really, actually. From Canada? From Canada, That's yeah. You don't want the power from Maine. No. It it's starts like, with the power, and then we're going get, to start getting health care from them, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be driving six hours up to Quebec just so I can uh, get to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the big news up here in Maine. Uh, you guys both originally from Boston, or I mean, uh, I was born in Somerville, but I was raised in the suburbs. So I think I'm fake if I say I'm from Boston. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you're you're the Sorry. you're the one honest Massachusetts person. <laughs> Yeah, I really try. Um, I don't notice the accent on me. It's only noticeable, I guess, if I go like to Florida or yeah. like Texas or something. But yeah. <laughs> anywhere else, it's like, no, this is just an upright fellow. <laughs> I don't hear an accent at all. Yeah, but I, did you grow up around like this area? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of comedians like to rub against the grain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Peter, where are you from? Uh, I, I moved out to Boston in 20, 2015. 2014? 2015. Was that, was that like six, seven? Seven? Okay. Yeah, it's seven. Seven years ago. Yep. Did you come out here to uh, go to school or just because you wanted to be here? Or? Uh, definitely not that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I was like, neither. I didn't want to be here. I didn't go to school. Somebody, he lost a bet. <laughs> You gotta. Uh, it was. Uh, it was work. I moved up for work. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was in New York before that. So nice. Yeah. Oh. Now, uh, since this is a comedy uh, podcast, I was gonna say, not you didn't go to Boston for comedy. No, no, okay. no. If anything, <laughs> I moved in the wrong direction for comedy. Yeah, if you were in, were you in the city in New York? Yeah, I was in Manhattan. I was a uh, oh. <laughs> dummy. <laughs> I fucked up. It was not the right move. Were you doing comedy when you were there? No, I was watching comedy when I was there. Yeah. I okay. wasn't doing it until I moved to Boston, which, is, is, yeah, it doesn't, okay. doesn't quite make sense. No, uh-huh. I agree. Yeah, but you had the bug for it. You know, you 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 were there watching it. You were paying attention to it. You had you had the I'm yeah. Not, we'll I mean, say I was learning. Let's you were say learning. That. Yeah, I was learning through osmosis. Do you think that uh, doing all or seeing all that comedy in New York is what made you want to do like an outdoor mic show when you came here? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was getting roasted on this, this podcast. <laughs> That's actually true, though. I during the pandemic, I uh, when we were all doing all the Zoom stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. I I took a trip to New York, and that's when they were doing all the rooftop park stuff yeah oh. and boston wasn't doing anything like we were all just doing zoom shows so when i came back and i saw i remember seeing like the new york stand right yeah the new york stand like comedy cellar like all these places the broadway comedy club whatever they were all just they had uh, been reduced to signs on different trees in central park 
I'm like, we have trees. The, I could the do acorn the same. comedy club. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, it's literally just like there's a tree. It's like the New York stand. I'm like, that's the New York stand. And then you see like another tree over there with a whole bunch of other people. So yeah, when I came back from that, I'm like, all right, all I need is a speaker and a mic, and then we have our own outdoor show. And that yeah. became Boston's first outdoor. How are you Mind powering you. things? Are there, are, there's like, are there like outlets in the parks or something like that? Yeah, you, you could buy a portable speaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they have the, the battery pack. Is, is, like a, is a generator going yeah. in the back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stench of gas. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're pull starting a generator this, every time there's a uh, show. This is what comedy's all about. So oh. you, 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 mentioned, you mentioned being, uh, dur- during the pandemic, we, we all met on Zoom. Yes, yeah, we did. And that was, uh, that was quite awkward to try to do. <laughs> yeah, you had uh, comedians who showered? Yes, yes, I did. Ah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a lie of a title. Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm you can sure just I, tell by looking at Just like out of like all the people, I like think like two people showered. <laughs> yeah, that was something. I'm glad we've uh, moved away from that and we have live shows Actually, again. live shows again. Yeah. I did have fun on the, your show. Then, yeah. Watching a couple yeah, it was, yeah. It, it was fun. It was fun. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for like the LA comics who still like that's on their only route for some of them. Really? Yeah. They're oh, still they're, doing that? They're not yeah. open enough to... Or like, um, uh, I think I talked to a couple like Irish comics and they're like fully locked down in Europe still, something like that. I don't know. This was oh. a couple months ago. I don't know if it's still I, like I did hear that Europe is still locked down. Yeah. They still got some issues going on over there. So feel bad for those guys because we are enjoying uh, live comedy again. So yeah, it is nice. Yep. Yeah. And Dave, I, uh, Leonard tells me you run a clean room. I ran one at uh, Improv Boston. Uh, they've been like sort of uh, shut down. Oh, they have uh, okay. like ever since the pandemic. But um, I did run the clean show for a while, and even like I was gonna bring it to the comedy studio where I'm working the door sometimes. Yeah. And that was supposed to be March twentieth, twenty twenty. Oh, oh okay. Jesus. Yeah, great. Yeah. How, did that, how, did that, how did that work out? That, that must have been awesome. I had text up until Friday, being like, "Oh, is the show still on?" And I'm like, "Yep, show's still on. It's happening." And then they told me no tickets have been sold, and I'm like. Mm. All right, let's uh, reschedule this thing. Uh, my ego cannot take this hit <laughs> before everything gets bunkered down. It, it was there no tickets sold because of COVID or because it was titled Clean Comedy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, we actually we had only priests booked for the entire show. <laughs> that wasn't even the plan. I just put father in front of everyone's name. <laughs> No, but, but so are you, are you still uh, primarily do clean comedy? You're... Yeah, I mean, I don't have like the show, so I don't have anything to live up to or any expectation. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like the pandemic's just kind of made me nihilist towards comedy in general, where it's like before doing clean comedy is like there's a plan to this, there's a logic, you know, like there's kind of almost like my set's almost like a thesis where it's like, no, this clean thing can work. Uh-huh. And now it's like, Nothing matters. It's yeah. just going to happen as it goes. I'm going to write jokes and perform them as they happen, but I okay. just think my voice in general doesn't make things dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't like it wasn't like a, a concerted effort on your part to, to be a clean comic, uh, or, or is it just like, oh, I just, this sort of fell yeah. in my lap and I, I can run this and yeah, I can do clean comedy. I right? feel like I was pretty over the edgy comedy, like around middle school. Like I feel like, <laughs> like I, that's where I got all the swears, all that, like, I don't know, like all the toilet humor, all that offensive humor. Like, I feel like I went through that phase during that time. Wait, and toilet now, humor is offensive. I, I, I didn't know that. Oh, that's, <laughs> don't, you know, yeah, actually, don't make toilet, fun of toilets. Toilet humor honestly shouldn't be that offensive since it's really just the body, but it's, I guess it's mostly just, um, the shock humor, right? That's what yeah. middle school is all about. It's just shock. <laughs> yeah. I feel like when I was in middle school, like Tosh.0 was like, oh my God, thing, like taking off. Uh, so okay. yes. you kind of get a sense of the yeah. type of sense of humor that was going all around. Uh, my, my son is in fifth grade and he's going into middle school. And it's hard to imagine, like, he's such a little kid right now. And it's so hard to imagine in three years him being like a young, almost, you know, a teenager, young adult sort of thing because he's just so small and hairless <laughs> you know, he's, small. He, he's just he's got no muscles he's got he's, he's just as, as opposed little. to his peers right well who knows i don't know i just have one i just have the one i have two kids but the one little boy who's going into sixth grade next year and, and so, so like the shock of middle school from starting out that way at sixth grade to becoming a high schooler three years later that, that is that's hard for the body to take it's hard for the mind to take yeah but in that time that's when you do learn all this crazy shit 
you learn about penis and vagina sex. Like, <laughs> right? I mean, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Guys. <laughs> for, those, for those listening to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, that, uh, that all happens. I assume in middle school. I don't, do you guys remember when you started swearing? Because when I hit sixth grade, I told myself I can swear now. Yeah. I think it was about that time. That's, I think that's oh. what, what I'm trying, what we're driving at here. <laughs> I, I had a hard time starting to swear. You actually. went to Catholic school. Yeah, I did. I went to a Jesuit school. Mm. And um, I, you know, people there curse because, you know, they were coming from all over the place. But, like, I couldn't, I couldn't do it until I was, like, a, a super adult. Like, it was, like, super adult. yeah, maybe, like, 20, 30s. 26, 28, something like that before I decided, oh, I guess I can start cursing now. <laughs> what, what, what a weird turn we've taken. <laughs> Cursing's hard. Cursing's hard. <laughs> Shit. Do you guys like to curse? Oh my god, David. <laughs> David. David. But but David. In, oh, in, the clean comic. That's in your set, so like <laughs> when you start going down that route, like do you feel do you feel different about it? Or is like do you think it's a lot of comedians, a lot of big time comedians think it's lazy, but then you see other, you know, big time comedians who like that's their bread and butter. I think it's good to have variety. Because I've noticed with like different crowds, they respond differently to different things. So obviously, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. There's some like sometimes like older crowds in particular, it's like hard to gauge. But then you say the word like jizz and they explode with laughter. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, okay, you guys just want some dirty stuff. That's all you really came out here for tonight, right? Like you don't want these smart, witty jokes, my yeah. opinions on anything. Yeah. You just want all these like whatever, right? You want jizz. So it's like good to have that in the back pocket in case you gotta bring it out to bring the crowd up. Okay. I think. Um but, it's hard to bring it up because you don't know until you say it. And, yeah, and, you don't know, right? Because like I mean, you do your normal stuff that you want to do, but I don't know. You, I feel like you got you got to feel it out, right? You have to feel it out sometimes. You got you got to do a little, uh, send up a little test balloon, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a little jizz test balloon to see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it explodes just, and everyone see if it pops and what happens. But that's that's a skill that stand ups have to develop, though. Like I mean, I I I've got like. 10, 15 minutes of jokes and like if something's not working, I'm like, sorry. I'm gonna <laughs> well, there's no pivot. There's no pivot. There's I'm gonna no keep pivot. going. <laughs> you don't do like you, that last joke? I got ten more minutes just more, like it. Okay. Like that. <laughs> so do you guys adjust your sets as as you're on stage? Do you guys ever do that or how often do you actually does that come about? I think it's usually with like longer sets that that you have more opportunity to actually do that. Like I, I did this um this like uh it was like a 60 year old uh, retired Navy SEAL's uh, birthday. Oh, and, okay. and his wife, like, it was like a big party for him, and like with all their family and friends or whatever. Um, it was like a private gig. And uh, I, it was like an hour and a half. So I brought some comics with me, right? And yeah. then in the end, I started to do like 35 minutes. And uh, I think like I started bombing 15 minutes in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That was the show where, like, I said jizz one time, like, somewhere in there, and then they explode. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I see what I was doing wrong this whole time before. This is what I was supposed to be talking about. Uh, I, like, try to win them back a little bit, and then, and then I don't know, it went up and down for a while, but I don't know. I, th I think... I think when you see more experienced comedians, they, they make adjustments faster, and they recognize what the crowd is responding to quicker as well. So okay. they... I don't know. But I feel like if you're, like, really big, and you're doing like i don't know like theaters and stuff like you're just doing you at that point you're like people know who you are when they go see right, you then right, right? versus right. like if you're just a guy and like mm -hmm. no one knows who you are um and it might be that the, the, yeah at that point they've got such good material that it works for you know it's going to work for 70 percent of the crowd anyway and that's yeah be, i think you know, once you're the, fully developed right yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but until then i think it's probably good to be able to at least read it's it's a it's a form of reading the room still, right? Just like, all right, what are they? What, are, what do they want? Yeah. The jizz. <laughs> <laughs> is this a pro pro jizz room? Yeah, you guys pro jizz. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's my open. Uh. <laughs> and Dave, do you ever adjust your set because of? What's going on in room? My bits are like a lot of one-liners that just kind of have like one common theme. So like it okay. might be like, oh, here's a bunch of one-liners that all kind of connect about haircuts. And if the <laughs> audience... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this, I may have a bunch of one-liners about um, a church bake sale, for example. 
And if the audience isn't vibing with it, like they really want the jizz balloon, <laughs> I just shorten it. I just, I'll, I'll shorten it. I'll take out whatever the longest uh, one liner is. I'll take that out and just try to get to the dirty clean stuff, okay. uh, which uh, lasts like 15 to 30 seconds. I got like one or two in, yeah. the, in the holster and that's it. Okay. And then you run out of juice, right? Well, you just gotta end. You, end boom, boom. you start the set with one, you end the set with the other, and then you at least say, at least I started and ended okay. Right? <laughs> just bukkake in the middle, right? <laughs> Usually that comes at the end, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, well, this podcast took a turn, doesn't it? It's, it's, uh, hey, it's free form. What are, what are yeah. you gonna do? Hey, Dave, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, my first set was May in 2019. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, no, 2014, sorry. Oh, I just got sick in my head. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm off by five years. I'll just Hold throw me. five more years <laughs> in it. That's quite a big difference. I read it wrong in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, wow, I've brain. been doing comedy longer than Dave, and I'm like, man, and he's so much better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, actually, no. Sorry, Actually, Leonard. yeah, no, he is. <laughs> oh, man. What was that first set like? Uh... Well, the first time I went with, like, I took a group of friends, which I feel like a lot of teenagers yeah. make that mistake when they first do it. Mm -hmm. And it was in one of those uh, bucket lottery style ones. <laughs> yeah. And my biggest gripe with these mics is that the bucket lottery style mics are completely rigged, uh, like everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, like, they really reward the regulars yeah. and kind of prevent, like, sort of the newer people from going in. Yeah. So my name was not called a single time. I got all my friends out. Oh, like, no. we bought, like, tickets to this oh. place, five or six of us. Did not go up the whole time. So then I had to go back like two weeks later and perform for the first time. Wow. Without your friends? Uh, with less friends but, that but, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. They're like, we, you fooled us once. Shame on, shame on us. Yeah, we're not about to buy two train tickets here. <laughs> it's going to happen this time, guys. Okay. Oh, well. you had to like actually travel. You had to like yeah, get on the, the commuter rail yeah, from uh, where I was living. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, well, they do that for a reason, right? They like for the... Well, it sucks that you didn't get to go up at all, but usually what they do is the, the guy who's new who comes and brings a bunch of friends, they put up all the regulars first so they get their work in and then they put you in at the end. Yeah, That's what they usually oh. do. That is definitely true. Um, in this case, I think it was Improv Boston. Um, we, can, we can throw it under the bus there. Actually. <laughs> uh, Fuck that guys. was known for being a warmer room in general, so okay. they were just riding the enjoyment of having people probably in that uh, space 10 p.m. on a Wednesday. Was there some mechanism for you to tell the, the hosts or the bookers that you were bringing, you know, 5 to 15 people I think if I was not a um, shy, touching my two fingers, 19-year-old, uh, like, I probably would have been better with it. But yeah. I was, like, way too shy. Um, I came over from, like, high school theater, so it was very just, like, <laughs> sit in the auditorium seat and wait your turn type. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like my trip to Chicago when I wanted to get on stage. I was telling everyone I could talk to that I'm from out of town. Like, please, <laughs> please let me get on this open mic. I'm from out of town. I'm from out of town. I'm from out of town. Yeah. And that does work too, like the out of town. Apparently one, yeah. so. Apparently so. Yeah. Yeah, I I went to an open mic in, in the Boston area, um, and I made sure I found the host as soon as I could, and was like, "Hey, uh, you know, me and a couple of people from Maine are here. We're from Maine, and we'd love to get up on stage, <laughs> being that we're from Maine." And then <laughs> he's like, "Oh, you guys are from Maine?" I'm like, "Yeah." Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He, you'll, you'll go. You'll go in the middle somewhere. One, two, three in a row. And I was like, "Oh, okay, thanks," because we're from Maine and. <laughs> <laughs> So. It's the way life should be. It's the way life should be. You're right. And then we actually did really well. Cool. <laughs> I was like, ha, ah, uh, main comics know where it's at. And by the way, we book shows on the way out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, we do. We, um, we book shows, unfortunately. <laughs> now, anyways, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a little pissed. Okay. <laughs> no. We got a great show tonight. You guys are on the show tonight. Yep. Are you excited? Have you both been here before? I like have not been to this dungeon ex escape room before, no. Yeah, this think, is it. This is, my, I think, my third time nice. know, being here. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to a nice show tonight. It'll be a sellout. Unfortunately, once people listen to this, uh, it'll already have happened. I, I can hurry up and edit this and put it out really quickly. <laughs> Send it out, get the word out. But no, this is going to be a good show. If we stop right now, I can start editing. It. No, we're, just, we're not just, stopping right now. This okay, is good. good. we got a jizz balloon going over. <laughs> How does the jizz balloon float exactly? How That's a great question. Work? That's um, momentum. 
<laughs> just keep tossing it up. <laughs> yeah, it's keep like keep it a, in the air. Oh, it's, it's like, like a hot concert. potato with a jizz balloon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy who like lets com- it touch the ground loses. I feel like competitive, like balloon, like what do you do? Like when you toss it and you tap a balloon and don't let it hit the ground, and people are like diving over furniture and. There's like a car set up in little mm-hmm. studios, stuff like that, and you're you're knocking a balloon, and if it touches the ground, then on your turn, then you're out. Have you guys you seen this? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what kind of parties you go to, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a YouTube party. I just a... like search YouTube forever and find weird shit. <laughs> oh my god, what's the furthest you guys have ever traveled for comedy? Uh, for well, I I was in L.A. For like other stuff, and I just did comedy. You got on a show there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But, uh, so I don't know if that counts. It does well, count. It, it counts. I mean, you're far away from home, and, and yeah. you don't know anybody. You don't yeah. have your friends, your yeah. peers, your your other you know comedy buddies hanging around, and and uh, you had the balls to go up and say yeah. like, yeah, it's an, it, it was weird because it's like on the other, you're like, do my jokes work on this side of the country? <laughs> <laughs> And then you go up, you're like, oh, yeah, people are just people still. Yeah, People so are people. people. Just because the ocean's on the other side yeah, of the street doesn't, doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it doesn't change that much. What about you? I mean, I drove yeah. cross country, um, you know, to L.A. as well. So, like, I did stops along the way. Nice. But if we're talking about towards this direction, I think I did, uh, was it the, the Bangor Brewing Company show? <laughs> which for, like, Oh, okay. It's like a five-hour-plus drive. Yeah. <laughs> and so just doing that there and back in one day was definitely a oh, lot. Oh, goodness. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Five hours one way. Just to so do you, a So you hopped in the car and, and went home after that show? Yeah, there's another time I did it with Jeff Medoff, and we got an Airbnb and like a okay. little trailer <laughs> attached to like a, a farm. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. You didn't get murdered. That's yeah, cool. the door locked. Hopefully, no, the- I mean, they gave us milk. Like it was Oakhurst milk that I think they produced there. So like. <laughs> It was really quaint. They did a great job with it, even the generator. Um, I, <laughs> shower, no chance. No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but I, one thing for me, like, I don't know um, in terms of you, but, like, I don't like sharing a bed with another adult. <laughs> Why'd you only look at me for that? <laughs> Well, because we're the guests. You, you look like guess. you like to share your bed with strangers. <laughs> These guys, they look normal. <laughs> uh, tell us why, Dave. <laughs> Wait, you just brought that up for no reason. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, because okay, okay. it was right, in the trailer. So you and Jeff had to share uh, like a king size bed or something? Well, Jeff, like that? What Jeff was saying, like, oh, like, you know, like kind of doing like the divide the bed in half. And I'm like, listen, let's just flip a coin. Let's flip a I'm coin. okay with fate deciding this. Either I'll sleep on this, like, What's effectively a padded kitchenette <laughs> or a bed. So we just let the coin decide. Okay. Because I would rather not Who share won? a bed. Uh, Jeff got the bed. Jeff 100% uh, okay. got the bed. Which right. uh, I would have just gone back in the bed afterwards. Just completely <laughs> reneged. I'm like, nope, we're splitting it 50-50. Yep. <laughs> Deal with it. We sleep ass to ass. And <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, I hate to admit it, but um, I went on a... A, a, a guy's trip um, to uh, we we went to a hockey game out and it was at the Notre Dame Stadium, the outdoor game the, the Bruins and the Blackhawks played at uh, Notre Dame Stadium and it was a bunch of guys and the first night before we flew out of Boston, it was going to be an early flight so we we drove down to a little motel six next to the airport and I think there was eight of us, two rooms, four beds, so we each had to bunk up together. And I only knew one of the other guys, but, you know, so I ended up sleeping in a bed with another adult man um, that I didn't know who he was. And that's a quick way to get to know someone. <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was an adventure. I, uh, You're like, I didn't know you shaved your legs. I, <laughs> those aren't my legs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was something. It was, it, it's, it's a weird thing, though, as, like, as an adult to... Uh, Share a bed with somebody you don't know. Of, uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Where are we going with this? I don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> Sounds funny. I want to hear Leonard's opinion on this. Leonard, what's your opinion on sharing a bed on with another bed. adult? Yeah. Uh, Aside from your wife, I guess you have to make sure they actually um, uh, care about you a little bit. Because like, <laughs> I remember I was in Fair. college, and uh, the, the summer before college, I, I tore my ACL, and I was on like crutches at one at one point and we w- we did a walkout in my fraternity and um we all 
drove to Canada and we sh- we like got a hotel room in in Canada and I'm on crutches with like a knee brace on mm-hmm. and I slept on the floor because oh. so <laughs> because apparently I didn't you know I wasn't good at flipping coins I guess because <laughs> a bunch of other guys got the two beds there there. <laughs> Wow, that's kind of shitty, actually. Yeah, are yeah. you still friends with these guys? Yeah, I, I, I think. <laughs> that's, I that's not cool. They probably laugh about it now. They probably think, oh, I remember that time he made Leonard sleep on the floor. Yeah, he, that he, was all he couldn't even up get up. down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just tipped over and went to bed. <laughs> he was crying all night because his knee was hurting. What whatever. a baby. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that's really strange. Yeah. You should write a joke about that. I should. I mm. mean. If What's, you were to climb up on the bed, you might have injured your knee again. So they probably thought it's better uh, if you just stay on the they're ground. They're looking out for me. You know what I mean? They're looking out yeah, for that's you. Exactly. Point. That's yeah. fair he point. can't hurt himself. He's already on the ground. Right. Yeah, <laughs> he fair. can't fall anymore. And, and when you are sharing a bed with another guy, like you have to sleep on the edge of the bed. So you could have fallen off. Even mm-hmm. if you got to lay down and be comfortable for a little while, you could have like rolled over, did one of those like falling off the cliff dreaming things. Oh. Did your, you know, those guys do care about me. Yeah, actually, yeah. see? We are, we are all still You should write them a letter. Yeah. Speaking of writing, um, but on boom, you like that segue. transition That's segue. Awesome. Yeah, nice. what, what's uh, what's your what's your writing style? What do you what do you guys like to do for for writing jokes? Don't speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you write jokes? Do you sit and actually write jokes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, we no. don't know what we're doing here. I, I, no, I, we just wing it. We just wing it. I'm rethinking I, the show tonight. I don't every want time. you guys on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we booked both these guys, like, right? <laughs> jokes? What? <laughs> You're doing what? I thought I was doing improv with <laughs> Leonard. Well, I know a guy who is doing improv I tonight I was if you invited want. invited just uh, to play Jizz in a Balloon. That's, <laughs> the, that's, the, I, that's all I prepare for. Just. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I write. I write. Okay, um, good. Okay. <laughs> my process is like a serial killer, so that's why I'm just like apprehensive about just like sharing it. You go first. Your sounds more are you, What are you doing? Cutting out letters from magazines? <laughs> well, I'm sure you all have like notes on your phone for like when something sure. like yeah. you want to mine for content happens. So yeah. I will have just a regular notepad and I'll just kind of write all the worries of the day on there. Oh, Jesus. So oh. then from there, I can open up that note and look through for ideas and then I'll just try to write off of that idea. And okay. then sometimes jokes come out of there. Yep. I'll put it on a note card, which I don't know if you guys may have seen me bring them on stage before or I bring them a lot to mics. Yeah. And then I'll just have those for a while and I'll just kind of operate off of them. But when they get good enough or when I have enough that fill one theme, I'll paper clip them together and then try to form kind of like a beginning and end to them. Oh, um, wow. That's uh, actually... And then I kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go out stabbing Metably for Metaphorically <laughs> speaking, on the stage, I oh, kill. Yeah. I kill. Quote, unquote. Yeah. Quote, unquote. <laughs> Dave the Ripper. <laughs> actually, that's that sounds like a really good process. Because yeah. you're actually like cataloging and, and categorizing and... You know, and using, like you said, like that, that journaling from the beginning of the, or, you know, from that beginning point of the, if you're journaling each day about your worries, which is worrisome, but, uh, you know, and then, and then bringing it back together and actually pulling them, physically pulling them together. I think that's, that's good. Is that, you know, that's probably how your brain works, you know? Yeah, I picked it, it just, up around uh, like 2015. I started writing in that notebook and then it yeah. just sort of evolved from there. It's actually pretty cool. I like that. Pete, you just write them. Just. <laughs> fucking shotgun it. <laughs> see what happens. See what happens. Right? You pop a balloon, see what falls out. You know. <laughs> no, I uh, I have like a shit ton of Google Docs, basically. Yeah. But like, usually what I'll do is like, if I have a funny idea or something comes to me, I'll like I'll jot it down, and then like later I'll go back in time and I'll like I'll write it, and then I'll see all right, what what can I like yeah. make funny here? And then there's some stuff where it's just like. I don't know. I've tried stuff where people are like, oh, you should just like write about stuff you care about and see. You just write paragraphs until something funny, like something you care oh. about, and see if something funny comes to it. Which to me is still very difficult. Like very rarely does something funny actually come out of it. Well, it's who so has hard. time to sit and write a paragraph? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it seems crazy. <laughs> We're busy. Um, but uh, yeah, I tried that for a while. I tried to like just like write stuff and then try to like like write about how you feel and then try to punch it afterwards. Yeah, and I don't know. It's still to me like very difficult. That like it's a, it's like doable, but it's like 
difficult. Right. Um, but like to me, I think the stuff that comes out best is usually just like things that I think are funny. I jot down and I come back at it. Like yep. it, it starts from a grain of, of funny already, as opposed to something that you think is interesting or true, and then you got to make it funny. You know I mean? Okay, like, that's like that's that's way harder still. Right. <laughs> yeah, trying to make something that's funny that's not actually funny is, you know, like politics. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because now you're you're like writing writing jokes. Yeah. You know I mean, to me, that's always been like harder. But I, it's probably I think it's good skill to like develop in case you ever like I don't know host some show or like you want to write for other people. You punch up speeches and stuff. But, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's actually that would actually be paid work. That'd be uh, <laughs> that'd be incredible. <laughs> Have you ever written a joke for someone else, or ever, ever sold a joke to someone? Uh, you see, they're usually free. They're usually free. <laughs> okay, uh, they're just, <laughs> <laughs> or just giving a joke to somebody. Like, like there been times yeah, like I feel I, we've all done that though, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's like, hey man, this is, this is a, you could probably try this tag or something, you know? Uh -huh. or like, yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, we've all done that, Leonard. Oh, really? Cool. You don't? I no. <laughs> No, actually, no, there was one time. There was one time I had a joke in my head, and I was like, I should never say this on stage, but Chris Kinback can say this. So, so, I, so I messaged him, and I said, you, sh you should use this. That's what did funny. he say back to you? Uh, who's this? Yeah, he's like, he's like, lose my phone. Fuck you. <laughs> you phone who this? Uh, was it a good joke? Uh, I thought so. Did you ever hear him do it? <laughs> no, well, I mean, well, he's in fucking Boston. I don't hear him. All the I'm time. just, I'm just yeah. asking, like, you, all right, yeah. it doesn't really matter. I thought it was funny. It made me laugh because I was in the car. It made myself laugh when I was like, all oh, right, that's good. I should that's get good. this. There's nothing more frustrating than being in the car or the shower or someplace where you can't write it down and you think of the funniest thing in the world. And I think that's, I think that's our excuse. Like, I had a good joke, but you know, I was in the shower, so, <laughs> so I forgot it. It'll never be done <laughs> on stage. <laughs> 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 done it all. What are your What are you guys' uh, you guys' Hey, uh, you guys. You guys' uh, <laughs> uh, goals for comedy. Like, where do you see yourself in five years or, you know, whatever? I see myself <laughs> uh, a little less in private student loan debt. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta get better at comedy if that's what you... <laughs> no, no, I'm just... Um, no, I think in five years I would hope that I'm, like, headlining at least, like, my first show. That would be cool. I, I think would hope I, I, would hope I have, like, 30 minutes by then. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I'd have to imagine. So you just started in 2019, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good goal. So is 30 minutes reasonable? Is 30 minutes the headlining amount of a time for, for well, you? I, I think like 25 is like the number for like I think like the minimum for okay. like certain yeah. shows, or at least like what you see around. But sure. I think if you have 30, then you can definitely cover 25. Right. I just booking shows. Like I've had some messages where people tell me on the clean show. I can do 20 clean, easy. <laughs> <laughs> then I see the worst seven minutes of clean material. <laughs> and then at the end, they pitch that they're selling merch in the lobby after. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this couldn't have gone any worse. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of what was supposed to happen. <laughs> so headlining sets... Five, you know, within five years. Do you want to do you want to move out of Boston and go someplace else and do that, or do you think like you're gonna? Well, I, you know, like a lot of stand ups, I spend you know too much money into like comedy festival submissions yeah. because you know those are anywhere from free to six dollars, uh, sixty dollars. You know, $6. yeah, six dollars <laughs> would be great. Six dollar submissions. <laughs> oh, part of the bank. <laughs> six dollars would be like such a discount for these submissions. But mm -hmm. I also studied writing for film and TV, so I have a script or two. Oh, nice. So I'm. Oh. Doubling down on these uh, rejection letters, so I'm spending fifty dollars <laughs> twice as often to get rejected. Wall, wallpaper rejection. in my room with rejection letters. Okay, you, you should just take your script, just produce your own movie. Just take all that money instead of spending it on that. Just make your own fucking movie. And that would be amazing to do. I mean, the uh, Trace Gatos guys did that recently. Uh, mm -hmm. Or recently ish. Me and uh, Peter worked on that. Nice. How was that? It came out, yeah. Well, I th they're submitting it to festivals, though. Yeah, they're right? doing they're it they're in like the festival festivals, circuit. Yeah. All right, yeah. talk about that so people people know what's what's going on. Like, uh, I wish I had more updates to tell you which uh, festivals that they're submitting to. I, I imagine know. just for last because they've done stuff with them before. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, they're still sort of like either in the submission phase or like the very final polishing it up phase. Like, I've only been able to see a screener of it so yeah. far, but I don't think they've had like a official premiere let's have a bunch of people in and watch wow. it together 
Say the title again for those who don't know. It's Oz. a salesman. Salesman. Just straight I, salesman. I have a solid four seconds of screen time. I you remember four seconds of screen time. solid seconds. You got a great line in there. You got a great <laughs> moment. That's, that's, that sounds great. I, I, I would watch it just for that. Just for that four seconds. <laughs> yeah. Just because reference. I know that guy. It's hey, historic hey, cinema. Hey, look, it, it's, it's cool, though. It's like the, the, the film, though, it's like pretty much all stand-ups in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. yeah. It's like all stand-ups. Like uh, pe- people local to New England scene, they even brought in like a bunch of New York guys as well. So That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Can't go wrong there. That's a credit, right? Yeah. I yeah. think down the line, it can be a credit. Yeah. It, it might be. <laughs> down the line, you're like, not right now. I'm not going to say it right now. Well, you never, <laughs> like, you never know. There's there's movies out there. There's TV out there. There's, there's things that have been produced that... People are in that you're like, oh, that guy's in it, and now he's this guy or this girl. It's kind of a big deal, and people go back. It becomes a cult classic, oh, as they okay. say. You know, it's an actual cult movie. So that's, that's, that's even true. better. It's oh, true. really? It's just yeah. just a oh, couple okay. years. It'll be a cult I, I classic. I play an idiot. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you really only in it for four seconds? Uh maybe eight seconds. All right, two cool. four second scenes. Oh, two nice. four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, that's more than any uh, either of us. Mm-hmm. Or, you yeah. Know, so sorry, but. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so, is that a goal for you? Do you think to 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 be in movies? Well, I've actually, yeah, I start I started uh, after the BCF last year, which was virtual. They actually they had some um, uh, like film people uh, watch the, the festival, which mm-hmm. was good. I didn't know that was, would be a thing because it was virtual, right? Yeah. And then uh, I had this guy reach out to me who was a Warner Brothers guy, and he was like, "Oh, would you be interested in doing sitcoms?" I'm like, "Hell yeah." <laughs> Let's fucking do this, right? Nice, yeah. And then he sent me a script, and uh, and then I rehearsed the shit out of it because I like before this I had never like really submitted for like, a, and it was like it was like an actual show too. So I was like, chances of getting this is low, but I like rehearsed the shit out of it. I asked my friend Jason. I think you guys, Jason Fishman, you guys probably yeah. kind of know him. Yeah. He was he was uh, my tech guy. Yeah, I was gonna say the yeah. guy who helped me produce the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. helped me produce the show. Yeah, right. exactly. So he, him, and I rehearsed the shit out of those scenes. And uh, there was one scene where I had to eat a gummy worm, and he was talking about how he's like, you know, the pros they don't actually eat the gummy worm because you have to do so many takes. I'm like, I, I don't fuck that. I'm gonna eat the gummy worms, right? Okay. But then, like after like a hundred takes, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna stop eating the gummy worms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of the fucking gummy worms. <laughs> but That's uh, funny. yeah, the so I did that. I submitted to the guy, and then uh, they like forwarded it over to the the casting directors, and eventually like. Obviously didn't get it, um, <laughs> but then uh, since then I started like I took a bunch of acting classes and stuff, and nice. doing more like commercial gigs and and movies and stuff, and it's been uh, it's been interesting. It's been very, very cool. interesting. Yeah, there's only so many films that come through like the Boston area. There's like five or six a year. Like we're mm-hmm. a secondary market, so like it, you it's a you can see pretty much everything. Oh, you can see pretty much everything that happens. So it's like uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I would, mm-hmm. I would, I would love to see you in, in a sitcom or, or anything like that. It'd be so cool to be like, wow, I know that guy. Like, yeah, I just, yeah. I just like, guy. me too. Yeah. I... He can get me tickets to something. <laughs> <laughs> He's rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, good luck with that. BCF, um, for those who don't know, Boston Comedy Festival. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. For, not, for those not in the know, for yeah. our ten yeah. listeners who, <laughs> which is next week, if you want to go. You That's know. right. Ah, That's cool. right. Um, I'm gonna mention that. When I bring you up um, later on, so are, are you in the the BCF, Dave? No, I spent too much money on the other uh, festivals that rejected me. I just uh, I don't have the submission for, um, fee, guys. If you could just let me in, since I'm from Somerville, that'd be wonderful. I'm from out of town. That, they can just town. reject the tape from last year. It's fine. <laughs> I, uh, I I recently submitted to a couple of festivals, and I'm anxiously waiting to hear. One of them's in North Dakota. <laughs> Sioux Whoa. Falls. Uh, it's the Snow Jam. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that'd be really cool to like... I got that rejection email. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming soon. Coming I'll just soon forward you an, my rejection email. That way. soon to an email inbox. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. There's one in Alaska. Can you imagine going to Alaska and doing a festival up there? Wow. What are their jokes about? I don't know. Ice? It's ice, Different snow. types of ice? Yeah, it's got to be... Or, or the fact that there's you live, 24 hours of sunlight in the summer. Yeah. I mean, would, if you live there, would you joke about ice all the time? I mean, you wouldn't. Don't the Inuits have like a hundred words for ice? Like different types of ice? I, 
or snow. I have yeah, recently snow. heard that, yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. actually wrong. That they do. Oh, uh, I can't remember the reasoning. Wait, it's ninety nine. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> they, they have quite a few apparently, but it's it, we do as well. We just don't use them. We do. What are they? <laughs> well, I don't know. That's, I, I think, <laughs> like, I, what? I think due to me. <laughs> I think that was the long and short of the explanation. Was like, listen, like they, they have just as many as we have, but they know how to use them, when to use them. They know the specific difference. I can't remember now. I'm just. I got my regular answer. ice. Regular ice. <laughs> I got this. Uh, I got hockey ice. <laughs> dry. Dry ice. Dry. Yep. dry. I got the ice I just slipped and fell on. <laughs> Wet. Wet ice. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You guys got anything to plug? You want, you want to plug anything coming up in the next few months? I mean, uh, I get, you can uh, always follow me on TikTok. Oh, I have Jesus. over an hour of content on there. <laughs> uh, it's super cringy, but you know what? You have an hour it, on TikTok? That's I, actually impressive. That's a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I went hard during so, the pandemic. Is that like the six second? Thing, or is that Vine? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm sorry, guys. It what? was 15 to 60 second, but then okay. they upped it so that you can. 30, right? Up to three minutes. Oh, wow. For certain Jeez. accounts. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Do you got to be verified for that? Uh, I don't know. I've never created anything more that's like a minute and a yeah. half. It, now, okay. is it just you doing jokes or is it you talking like, in the car? It's bits. It's um, like kind of sketches, but yeah. I feel like it's really helped with delivery just because I also have to edit the stuff like right. on my computer myself. So I'm hearing myself re redo the same joke over and over again. Oh, it must be brutal. <laughs> and it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm really just reciting. I'm not acting. I'm not actually delivering these lines. So oh, if anything over the pandemic, that's been the biggest takeaway for me in terms of comedy because Zoom comedy, I'm sure you guys probably oh. talked about it on a previous episode already, yeah, but yeah. sucks. Yeah. So <laughs> having more control is better. Yeah, for okay. sure. All right. We'll check you out on TikTok. What's it? What's the handle? Um, at David McLaughlin. Oh, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Right. Last name spelled M-C-G-L-O-F-F. -F. Wait, say Wait, that what? Again? That's I'll, not how I'll, you. I'll send you the. Send us the link. <laughs> it's like so you misspell your last name. Yeah, yeah I have a nickname at, like at work called Gloff. So uh, my last name uh, is uh, MC Laugh L I N. I so I just okay. do Mick Gloff because that's how it just sounds. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. We'll find you. <laughs> that was very interesting. What just happened? <laughs> like this is my name, but this is how you don't spell it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> My handle is how it's said, how it's, okay. how it's pronounced. Okay. Phonet, phonetically, is that the phonetically. word? Phonetically, yeah. okay. All right. so that's, that's Peter, good. what's your TikTok handle? <laughs> I had a TikTok for like two weeks. Yeah. Maybe more, like a week maybe. Well, now I it's going to blow up. Let us know what no, it is. It, already, uh, it's, it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore because I'm like, I don't have time for all of this. Like this was during the... I think it was during the pandemic because TikTok was exploding. And honestly, I probably should have just kept it going. It would have been a good idea. Uh -huh. But instead, you can follow me on Twitter... Facebook page and Instagram. Okay. Yeah. And what's That's your MySpace? More traditional. What's my MySpace? <laughs> well, you probably want my OnlyFans before my MySpace, right? That's, it's uh, a, <laughs> it's uh, it's Peter Lou comedy spelled uh, <laughs> McLaughlin. <laughs> M C L A. <laughs> With an oof. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled. A... <laughs> Are you having fun, Dave? Sorry. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Don't follow me. Follow yourself. So I do, I do technology work, and I'm always like, every time I see like someone's work email, like someone starting a business, and they've got like the the name of their the, the email that you sent. Oh, else I'm you know I'm Bill Smith. I'm doing this. I'm Bill Smith. You know, lumber or whatever. And it's like. The email is billsmith01294 oh, at gmail.com. Like, can't you find some other name that you can find that actually people will actually be able to remember and actually send email to you? Yeah. It's yeah. just the only thing I'm complaining about. No, well, I hear you. Yeah. you okay. Make it simple. Mine's just my name and comedy. That's it. Okay. Peter Lou Comedy. All right. Sweet. P T R L I U Comedy. Boom. Done. Everything. Mm -hmm. Cool. Consistency. Consistency. <laughs> Branding, I think, is what yeah. it's called. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you guys very much for joining us. We're going to end the, in the interview with uh, a segment we call "Curse the Darkness." Uh, and so there's uh, any of that goes like, "I'd rather light a candle than curse the darkness," which means like I would rather do something about my problems instead of sitting around and complaining about them. But in opposition of that, we like you guys to actually curse the darkness and complain about something that you don't have any plans about uh, correcting. 
or not. So we're, we're putting out candles. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> just just spitting on the candles, spitting on other kids' birthday parties, like no, blowing no out candles for you. <laughs> that could be something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so so just complain about something. Yeah, sure. That right. you have no interest in fixing. We, can I fix more? his? Instagram handle. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> fair. fair. That's fair. <laughs> Life's pretty good, though, if that's the only thing. <laughs> All right, you go, you go. All right, I think... Um, it's definitely too personal, but I would love uh, if the if the alcoholic aunt that's living with me would just move out. I'm not going to do <laughs> shit about it. No one's ever going to know that I have such grievances with this. But right now at my house, this my aunt is living with us. She has two kids that own houses that are not taking her in, and there's no reason why they couldn't. I'm going to say nothing the whole time, but I am pissed about it every single day. Wow, that is very Whoa. personal. Um, <laughs> if you share this podcast and, and people from your family listen to it, would that be something that you wouldn't want them to hear? No, they can, they can listen to it. If okay. they listen to this whole podcast for this segment, they earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know how to find it because they'd be searching for the wrong name. So, Jesus. So, get, <laughs> get off the guy. Get off the guy. <laughs> All right. No, really. Thank you guys very much. Uh, you guys have been great. Uh, we will have an awesome show this evening. Yes. Looking forward to the show tonight. Mm-hmm. I really, really am looking forward to it because I'm going to be in the back hanging out. Watching the show too, like <laughs> with- sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No, we're gonna have a great show. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Peter, yeah, yeah, thanks guys. Thank wow. you guys. Peter Lou, David McLaughlin. Thank you to Peter and David for joining us. It was a really, really great interview. I'm happy to have them. Jizz balloon. <laughs> Thanks again to everyone who listened. Tell your friends and follow Comedy Think Tank wherever you can. Be sure to give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Find us on Instagram at Comedy Think Tanked, Twitter at Comedy Tanked, and our website, ComedyThinkTank.com. Email us at ComedyThinkTanked at gmail.com. Watch out for those balloons. Music was written and produced by a minor, Ralph Bergfeld. No comedians were hurt in the production of this podcast. All audio snippets of actual funny punchlines were not written or performed by any of us or our subsidiaries. Rather, they are express written bits of professionals we admire. Let the civil actions be filed. Any opinion heard, actual or implied, is that of the comedy think tank producers and their guests. Any slight, insult, affront, slur, disparaging remark, snub, rebuff, rejection, or spurning, no matter how derogatory, pejorative, or abusive you may feel it is, was not intended, but for comedic, entertaining purposes only. Thanks for listening. That was Peter Lou and David McLaughlin. Oh, my God. I've been drinking. <clears throat> McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Mc, McLaughlin. Just say, hey, I would That nice was Peter and David. <laughs> wow. Thanks to Peter and David. There you go.